this is the lecture 4 in this uh, NPTEL course on uh, ground improvement techniques. Uh, we will be talking about uh, mechanical modification in which you improve the properties of soils by using mechanical means. Uh, for example, uh, using shallow compaction methods and deep compaction methods. This uh, compaction is essentially a ground improvement technique in which the soil is densified to an external compactive effort. For example, in the case of track the um, uh, compactors or the any, any other mechanical means of densification. What happens is that the void ratio that you have in the initial uh, stages reduces in the presence of water. The advantages of compaction are that it increases shear strength that is uh, in, uh, in a way that improves the bearing capacity, it reduces the uh, compressibility which means the uh, settlements on the improved ground are going to be very less and it also reduces permeability. There could be many field situations in which uh, you have a uh, lot of uh, seepage uh, because the void ratio is higher there and the permeability is going to be higher. So, in which case you would like to uh, reduce the permeability and uh, if you compact the uh, soil you are trying to achieve the increase in shear strength, uh, reduction permeability, the reduction permeability as well as compressibility. It also leads to reduction liquefaction potential as I just mentioned the case of uh, the some one of the dam failures during the budget quake, there is one dam called Chang Dam in which it totally collapsed because the uh, compaction of this soil in the initial stages was not uh, very good and uh, people were using uh, methods like flooding uh, for uh, compacting sand which means that it, it goes to relative densities of about, about 60 to 70 percent. Whereas, if you want to really get very good uh, resistance for liquefaction you must be able to compact it to very high densities and uh, if you that is only possible by resorting to good compaction techniques. The compaction also enables control of uh, swelling and uh, shrinking and it also prolongs the durability. So, for example, the gully erosion that we see in uh, many of the deposits like uh, if the compacted uh, soil is present the tendency for the erosion is less. And uh, the strategies that we follow for compaction process are. Uh, in the case of constructed fills, say for example, in the case of embankments, we need to specify the placement conditions like you must be able to say what should be the water content of the uh, fill, what should be the density and the number of layers and we should, be, we should be able to suggest them the, sec the appropriate equipment as well. Say for example, roller compactor or tamping and the method of operation also. The, for example, this includes the number of passes, patterns of tamping, etcetera. Then you should also have adequate control procedures uh, because the compaction is something that uh, is uh, very, uh, uh, very uh, sensitive to errors in the sense that if you, you know that the uh, compaction curve uh, as you will see that uh, it is somewhat uh, sensitive to many of the changes and uh, to obtain the compaction curve we need to have, we have certain standard procedures wherein you take a standard mold and compact the sample. You have two procedures, one is a standard compaction, the other one is a modified compaction in which uh, the, uh, the in one case you have uh, because the height of drop is uh, say for example, is uh, about 300 mm, uh, the energy input required or the stored energy into the system of the compacted uh, system is about 596 kilojoules per meter cube. Whereas, in the modified compaction, uh, the height of drop is about 450 and even the number of uh, blows is higher. Uh, in the previous case, it is about uh, the 25 and then so this leads to the say for example, this is what I meant. Where you have in the modified proctor, you have 5 layers, 25 blows and then the with 4.9 kg hammer, uh, you have higher energy input whereas in the case of standard proctor, you have comparatively lesser energy input. So, So, you can see that the, the objective here is uh, in the case of compaction curve you need to define the what is called uh, optimized water content on the OMC and then maximum dens uh, density for a specific uh, compactive effort. Uh, 
and uh, there are a couple of issues that uh, we need to address in the case of uh, compaction. Uh, once we uh, get the field uh, laboratory compaction the in, a, in the uh, like a compaction curve in the field you must be able to sp uh, specify what is operating frequency the number of passes in the depth of layers and uh, compaction at freezing temperature is also going to be a critical issue. You can see that uh, the uh, depending on the type of soil like these are all 1, 2, 3, 4 soil types uh, the, there are some fixed number of passes beyond which there is a good the density becomes maximum. And uh, say for different soils have different densities like say for example, the fly ashes and other material they have low densities for example, in the range of 1.2 to 1.3 whereas, sands and uh, silts and other uh, clays they have higher densities. Uh, that is what I was just mentioning the advantage of the compaction would be to obtain uh, uh, this condition wherein the soils are densely packed and it leads to good strength and stiffness and also low permeability of course, the compressibility is also quite less and, um, and you can see that if the curve is somewhat you know the, the way it takes off particularly in the case of clays is something very uh, uh, it is curved uh, which means that it is uh, the it is very sensitive to water content uh, changes. And uh, one needs to understand because uh, what, what is going to happen during the process of uh, compaction that one needs to understand. And um, the thing is that if uh, the compacted sample if, uh, if, it, if you are able to really plot a curve of uh, the soil alone this could be the uh, soil uh, component and then this could be the uh, water what the water presence and then this could be the gap could be the air presence. What it means is that the uh, it is not possible to you will have the degree of saturation uh, cannot be uh, one close to the optimum moisture content or close to this range. Actually this is also very useful because uh, you uh, you can see that the uh, you will get if it is fully saturated uh, the strength is going to be marginally less whereas, if it is uh, uh, unsaturated or partly saturated the advantage would be because the degree of saturation is going to be lesser you will have uh, higher uh, the strength. Um, it is always good idea to plot the compaction curve in relation to the uh, 0 aerovides line line because uh, this gives the uh, range of uh, water contents uh, like say for example, this is the 100 percent saturation line you have a 90 percent line here, 80 percent line here and 70 percent lines here. The advantage would be that you will be able to understand the relative magnitudes of water content uh, changes as well as uh, density changes. Uh, because of uh, the influence of degree of saturation. This is very important from a uh, field point of view because um, when the material gets saturated you should be able to understand what should be the changes in density, what should be the changes in uh, uh, like say for example, settlements and uh, these are all very important and uh, so, this is an expression for uh, obtaining the 0 air voids line and then uh, one can similarly obtain with simple modification of this equation. Um, from fundamentals one can get different uh, air void lines. Uh, another important point that we need to hear note is that the uh, because of the energy input uh, so this is for example, uh, the compaction curve could be different and actually this gives a motivation also for going for uh, higher energies also in the field. So, for example, if it is possible if this is a standard proctor test and then if this is the maximum uh, uh, this is the maximum density and this is the maximum water content at which you can get the uh, density. So, you can see that that can be really taken care of by um, in, are improved by going for higher compaction this is what I meant. So, for example, if I have higher compact effort what it means is that instead of the actually what happens is that as the density increases shear strength also increases for the same effort that is the reason as a, uh, we also know that uh, the energy input in the case of uh, uh, the sample with higher ener energy input is going to be higher energy input energy input is higher which means that if you want to shear the sample the energy has to overcome which means that the strength is also going to be higher. This is another important point that one should understand 
that the orientation of the particles along the uh, dry side as well as wet side one can see that on the uh, dry side we say that the sample has a flocculated structure whereas in the case of um, wet side you have a, a dispersed structure and uh, maybe the tendency will be much less here and particularly when you increase the energy input it will be more dispersed and the consequence of um, uh, dispersion effect is that you will have higher permeability here whereas a lower permeability here. So, one should uh, really uh, say for example, if you are talking about dams nowadays people the people the energy inputs are going to be higher and um, the, en the uh, permeability is an important uh, factor in the uh, many of the uh, like say for example, seepage and other considerations. So, one needs to really decide which side of compaction one should uh, do in the case of say for example, a dam. Uh, definitely when you see that it is it could be on the wet off optimum the permeability could be lower. So, the seepage pressures could be lower and uh, there is another important point that one needs to understand that uh, if you increase the compactive energy say for example, you can have different compactive energies like you know one can even extend this line up to like you know say this is a say for example, the that 0 air watch line could be even extended that uh, to meet the specific gravity. Then this is another uh, plot just I would like to show where in this case you know for example, it is actual case where the degree of saturation in this case is about 80 percent which means that in this range between 80 to 9 uh, the, the optimum lies somewhere between 80 to 100 percent. So, this is what we uh, understand from um, in many even in our lab we see this some of these things. And to achieve this in the field uh, you need to have a number you have number of techniques we call what you call static rollers then um, we call we have uh, smooth steel rollers and pneumatic rollers ship's foot rollers grid rollers then one can go for impact and vibratory equipment where you have tampers rammers plate compactors vibrating rollers and impact rollers and uh, these are all the different types of rollers like it can be a simple impact at the uh, impact roller and this is another road roller type that we see this is a ship's foot roller and this is a drum roller this is impact loader. So, varieties of equipment are possible here what we do is that the advantage actually you must have you specify normally based on the laboratory test the uh, compaction uh, specifications you give and uh, you make one dense one uh, do some rolling and then this is with definite depth then you specify some density and you have to specify some density and actually okay the, assuming that this has uh, minimum before compaction there is some density of uh, 16 kilometer per meter cube and if you compact it you will have a density like this. So, one needs to really um, uh, see that the uh, the for example, you know you, you must be able to specify some number here over which the uh, density is same more or less same that is objective here and uh, that has a specific thickness here like the depth and um, it is very important to specify that depth also um, that is the reason the function is that the objective here is that the density has to be same everywhere. What happens if the density is not same everywhere and if there is a loose density the probability is that that is going to be a weak zone and we do not want weak zones in the case of dams and uh, other important structures. So, you normally try to do this by calibration in the field like you have already some rollers try to take some um, you know what is before compaction you have some density and uh, try to take some uh, samples at uh, different locations and then uh, say for example, at 0.3 meters, 0.6 meters and 0.9 meters something like that and uh, you see where is the density. So, you one can really come out with this uh, compaction uh, lift thickness uh, specifications could it be 50 centimeters or uh, 30 centimeters or whatever you normally specify like that you know in the field it depends on uh, the effort compaction effort or this type of uh, uh, compaction equipment you have. And to give an idea uh, of that um, you can have that you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 refers to the type that I showed you in the previous uh, thing these are the respective weights and this is the frequency of those missions and the depth of lift is given here. 0.2 to 0.4 meters, 0.15 to 0.5 meters, 0.3 to 0.5 meters. So, this and then even if one can if you have a heavy towed rollers you can even go as high as 1.4 meters and even impact rollers it could be 3 meters which means that 
one can really like depending on the type of equipment that you have one can uh, the, the, the thickness of the lift could be different. So, one needs to really calibrate this in a proper way and uh, of course, this also depends on the number of passes as I just showed you in a previous uh, diagram the number of passes in the range of 4 to 6 could be uh, reasonable in most of the cases. Once you get those number of passes what we will see is that whether the density is um, satisfactory or whether it is uh, say for example, finally again you must be able to do a shear strength test or a compressibility test later and uh, see if uh, it is satisfactory. So, in the case of impact roller it could be much higher like as has high. So, you can see varieties of figures here like uh, this is a the uh, smooth wheel roller, this is a vibratory roller, this is a pneumatic rubber tired roller you can see that rubber tires here and uh, this is a sheep's foot roller. So, essentially these are all some of the equipment that we have in the uh, field practice and uh, one should in the uh, do this um, take under samples from these uh, places and then try to find out its uh, water content and wa the density and to see if the sample that we have has the required properties. In this is in the case of a smooth uh, wheeled roller that we see normally in many places and it compacts eff uh, very effectively uh, to about 200 to 300 mm and therefore, it is very good in uh, shallow uh, for shallow compaction and uh, vibrating plates for example, for compacting you know say for example, you know, close to a parking lot you can take this particular thing and then uh, compact it and uh, sheep's foot roller is something that is very useful in the case of clays. Uh, remember that it provides a kneading action like it just walks out after compaction it needs uh, very effective on clays and uh, the impact roller is something that uh, also is very useful, but the number of rotations required is very huge and uh, provides deeper compaction which is quite useful. In this what we essentially need is that uh, the compaction we try to uh, measure and you must be able to really have a good compaction control. Uh, this uh, is essentially an exercise where you check the compaction uh, whether it is satisfied not at regular intervals. Uh, and then there could standard specifications could be like this like say for example, if you have a 1000 one test per 1000 meter cube of compacted soil or it could be at 500 meters for example, on a national highway you should take. So, this is what I just meant like you take a sample and this is sample here then uh, what is its uh, water content and density you try to compare with field specifications that is what we do. And if you there is uh, some more criteria into that uh, which we will be able to address a uh, little later. The advantage here would be that the uh, whether it is a clay or a sand one should remember that the dynamic pressures that are uh, induced into the system are uh, different depending on the type of material. So, for example, in the case of sand the uh, you know the dynamic vertical dynamic pressures induced are less. Uh, and uh, in the case of clays it is going to be higher. So, this is an important point because if you are trying to choose an, a, an equipment that has uh, uh, that can only give low energy inputs uh, it may not be very useful say, say for example, in the case of sands um, if the uh, simple equipment which has low energy inputs can be it cannot be chosen and it can be chosen whereas, in the case of clays uh, you need to have higher energy inputs. Uh, which is a uh, useful consideration here. Uh, before we proceed further we must be able to understand uh, the properties of compacted soils. What it means is that uh, what are the properties of the soils that we have to see and how you know how do you really see the effect of compaction. Uh, as I just mentioned we are looking at uh, the increase in uh, shear strength reduction in uh, compressibility reduction permeability. So, people have been trying to look out to what extent say this is a, unless you understand the compacted soil behavior we should not be able to we cannot comment on the improvement. So, in the uh, in a we will be able to see some of them here and um, one of the important characteristics that affect the uh, properties of the or the response of the compacted uh, soil is that the type of soil itself. We must have a clear demarcation 
with reference to cohesive soils and uh, sands. Say for example, uh, in a compacted uh, soil we are only looking for optimum moisture content and maximum dry density. And um, if there are different types of soils what is going to happen is that as the uh, OMC increases and uh, maximum dry density decreases with increase in plasticity of the soil. Uh, you have a uh, number of uh, soils in the, uh, in the in the construction of roads you should be able to understand that uh, this pro this particular feature. One thing we know that is that the, with increase in compactive energy the maximum dry density increases OMC decreases. So, apart from that uh, with regard to the nature of the soil itself one should be able to know that OMC increases and MDD decreases with increase in plasticity of the soil. Say for example, if you are looking for a uh, pla the uh, higher higher uh, density then you should go for a less plastic soil. So, for example, the plasticity in the sense liquid limit plastic index uh, plastic limit and shrinkage limit these are all we say that uh, the uh, prop the uh, limits on which one can classify the soil behavior. Uh, in fact, there are some uh, equations developed in literature to connect the liquid limit plastic limit to say for example, OMC or MDD. In fact, one can do this also in a big construction project where you do an uh, the uh, what the advantage of this uh, relationships is that um, you know its plastic limit. Say for example, we know that the plastic the red soil that we test the plastic limit of the soil is say 23 percent plastic limit and then the OMC is uh, 22, 23, 20 percent. So, you can say that the OMC is P L minus 3 percent. So, this is an empirical relationship. So, like that uh, uh, for many soils people have developed uh, um, relationships uh, based on a uh, lot of uh, experimental studies and they are very useful in quality control programs and uh, trying to cross check the data that you have. So, for example, the liquid limit as I just mentioned higher is the liquid limit higher will be its OMC like we have observed. So, for example, in the case of black cotton soil uh, the liquid limit is about 80 percent and uh, the uh, its uh, plastic limit is about 33 percent then it the its, its uh, OMC will be about 30 percent. So, you can see that there is a good uh, uh, in uh, relationship between the plastic limit and the OMC and the even the liquid limit uh, index of the soil also. Uh, so, people have been able to relate these uh, limits as to even to dry densities that one can use and uh, of course, these uh, empirical equations need to be treated with caution and one should uh, develop site specific equations or they may be useful for some cross checking purposes, but it is very essential to really come conduct in all the uh, test results in a proper manner and uh, one, one is not a substitute other. Say for example, if uh, you have only plastic limit you should not stop doing an OMS compaction test. There is an equation available, but you should check it. It does not mean that uh, one should really use uh, only plastic limit and get its OMC. One should really check what is this relationship and uh, maybe if the relationship is useful you can just it can be a check nothing more than that. So, this is in the case of uh, compacted cohesive soils and uh, in the case of uh, cohesionless soils and uh, even fly ashes and other things the maximum dry density is connected to the grain side distribution parameters. Because the grain distributions uh, grain side distribution means that D 10, D 60, D 90 and all those parameters. What we do is that we try to um, uh, say for example, if it is a well graded material um, D 60 and uh, D 10 they have some ratios or D 90 and D 20 they have some ratios or say for example, if this material is not well graded they are same they are in the same range like uh, that is what it means. So, the grain side distribution characteristics um, uh, if they are uh, they are related to maximum dry density why because if the density of packing is very good what it means is that the bigger uh, particles have a bigger voids. So, if the well uh, there is a well graded material the small material get get into that, into that and then there is a good packing and then it, it will have a very good uh, uh, relationship with uh, grain size characteristics. So, these are all in a simple way some of the um, uh, aspects that one needs to examine when you are looking at uh, 
the properties of uh, compaction. Uh, this is another important relationship because we know we do compaction and then uh, we should know say for example, you got a compaction curve like this. Then what is its uh, implication? What does it mean? So, like if 0 6 to 26 percent there is a water content here. So, if you are able to and the same so for, say for example, um, this is the water content at a very dry state and the CBR is about 6 18 uh, 17 to 18 percent and then as you water content is increased CBR comes down. Okay. But then you can also do a soaked CBR after testing which means that like you can take samples here and then soak them and then do a CBR test so could and then soak them like you know say for example, what it means is that this uh, value after soaking has come down this much. So, initially it may be in some cases what happens if the soil is very dry say for example, 5 percent water content you will get a very high CBR. The moment you soak for 4 days the CBR comes down to 4 percent this is a very risky whereas, in some other uh, soil which is compacted well and all that and has close to this case you know say for example, the uh, in this area you know the soil has maximum density and uh, uh, water content is also optimum and all that the difference between uh, CBR in the molded condition as well as soaking condition is going to be less. And after that see this line almost the degree of saturation is going to be you know uh, close to 1 or you know 0.8 or something 999. So, the thing is the differences are minimal whatever this is a simple example, but you know you do not they do not need to coincide here, but then one can say that the uh, differences in uh, CBR after as remolded and soaking are very important and then that is the reason why you need to really compact the sample very well. So, that you will not have a very big difference between a molded or, uh, and then soaked values. This is another important thing like if you do not compact well what happens that there is a tend the moment you add water in particularly in some clays there is a tendency for swell. So, so the uh, swell potential also comes down as the water content is increased. In the case of low water contents the swell is higher, but as it is close to OMC and uh, other conditions the swell is minimum and as the higher water contents are added the swell is going to be minimum. So, this is a very important uh, uh, um, uh, aspect of the compaction why we should do compaction is only because of this reason that we do not need to have abnormal changes in water content uh, or the shear strength you know CBR is a measure of shear strength of the soil is it not. So, the CBR in fact represents the penetration resistance of the uh, subgrade. So, you should see that the penetration resistance in soaked conditions and uh, unsoaked conditions is going to be less or if it is more it is we should only take the uh, soaked uh, strength in design considerations. Then this is another important point like uh, you can see that the CBR versus the molding water content. So, for example, the molding water content is nothing but the water content at which you prepare the sample as a what this is 15 and um, this is 14, this is uh, 13, 16, 17 about 20 you have different degrees of uh, different water contents here and uh, you can see that the responses are different like the if you do a CBR test, CBR is a penetration test. Okay. So, the strengths are least when the water content is going to be very high like 20 percent, but you can also see that the strength is very high like you know the CBR value is about 30 to 40 percent when they it is dry condition. So, this is some implication that you need to really understand the variation of uh, uh, CBR as a function function of moldy water molding water content the water content which you test the samples. Uh, this is another important point like say uh, on the same uh, there is another test called stabilizometer, stabilometer R value. We actually this we use in uh, payment engineering where uh, this also gives uh, the resistance to penetration some resistance or the strength parameter similar to that where uh, one can see that 
as we in the case of dry state the water content you have the values in this range and uh, water content like this is 9 percent this is 11 percent and uh, as water content is increased you can see that the it is somewhere the you know the, it has a low values these plots are you know they increase they in fact they, they show you the line of optimums in fact if you draw an optimum curve it could be somewhere here and these are all the lines of optimum values. So, uh, one more thing is that the dispersion in the compaction like you know the uh, like you know if this will this will this will be in the wet side of uh, compaction if the soil has the, the dispersion structure what happens is that uh, it is easy to shear whereas in the case of uh, uh, flocculated structure the strength is going to be little higher. So, when the water content is same the shear strength is going to be higher in the case of uh, flocculated structure type of soil and uh, whereas in the case of uh, dispersed structure it is going to be less this point one needs to re uh, realize as the same water content. Uh, this is another important point like uh, the uh, you have the, the effect of uh, you know the compaction on the stress strain behavior. Say for example, uh, if you do a good compaction and uh, and then have this is a, the actually a close to a compaction curve you know you have plotted the 0 air voids line and you also have this uh, particular thing. So, you can see that as we you know uh, here somewhere it is about CBR is about 6 percent it is 8 percent here and as you go to this side the CBR value is going to be higher like that is what this shows and uh, actually these are all some set of results you know one can get any set of results depending on the type of uh, soil that you have these are only indicative of the uh, met, uh, method or indicative of the significance of compaction. Then the another important point that we need to understand is that how is that stress strain curve going to be different when the soil is compacted to needing compaction static compaction and then um, you know the dry of optimum wet of optimum. So, for example, here you can see that in the case of needing compaction the wet of optimum where the water content is going to be little higher the need uh, the shear strength is somewhat like this stress strain response is like this where it is somewhat flatter whereas, same soil when it is compacted and uh, in the same range of water content um, the uh, you have a better I mean uh, better stress strain curve in the sense that the stiffness is higher here like you no know, in the case compared to this stiffness here. So, whereas the same soil which is compacted to dry of optimum you have much better curve what it means is that the uh, compaction state of the whether what type of the type of compaction has a significant influence and also the uh, state of compaction whether it is a dry of optimum or a wet of optimum it has a big difference in influencing the uh, the type of the stress strain response. Uh, this is another important point that one needs to understand uh, particularly with reference to its uh, compaction curve say for example, uh, uh, the compaction curve will be somewhere like this. So, one can calculate the shear strains in the uh, samples like you know the thing is uh, why we are doing compaction is that we will have higher shear strength which means that the shear strains at any uh, level have to be uh, lower. So, like actually this is some uh, result from published literature in which they used uh, repeated uh, uh, testing like cyclic triaxial test they have used in which you would be interested in um, knowing what are the strain levels. So, for example, if I am talking about a payment structure the, re the repeated loading that you have uh, you know the shear strains it will introduce uh, number of uh, uh, traffic uh, simulations. So, for example, it is a 100, 100 million standard axial loads or 1000 uh, million, million standard axial loads it has a big difference 
and then it introduces some sort of uh, shear strains into the system and uh, when is the shear strains going to be minimum or what is it we, if you want to understand from compaction behavior one can see that uh, say for example if I just say this is E1 epsilon 1 the epsilon 1 is least in this region which is nothing but it is close to uh, gamma d and omc here region which means that if you do uh, good compaction the strains are going to be very less and uh, we should take advantage of this uh, um, issue in the case of payment design. Like if you are trying to understand uh, any of the phenomena like um, rutting and fatigue in uh, payments uh, strains are very important. The, the moment uh, the strains develop what happens you will see the formation of uh, ruts uh, then after that it leads to potholes and all that. So, you do not want to do that. So, that is the reason the compaction has a very big influence in the case of payments of course, um, to all, all the geotechnical structures it is very important, but uh, some of these things will be very uh, evident in the case of uh, failures uh, in the case of payments. Uh, in fact, in some places people try to classify soils based on their uh, moisture sensitivity like you know as I just mentioned uh, in the previous uh, examples we saw that the water content uh, has some suppose a particular soil has lot of uh, tendency for um, um, strength variations we say that it is very sensitive and uh, we should worry about that type of uh, sensitivity and in fact in Australian uh, uh, research they have classified that in, ter in terms of a, some particular number and then they came out with say for example, if you have a compaction curve like this uh, the sensitivity numbers are plotted here. So, it, they are nothing but some ratios in which uh, 3 indicates a good material and uh, whereas 9 indicates a poor material like you know the material is subjected to lot of variations in uh, uh, shear strength as a result of variations in water content it means. So, you normally have a in the range of uh, 3 or 4 or 2 or something it is supposed to be a good material. You can see that the soil with low moisture sensitivity is like this soil with uh, you know uh, particularly here you know the this is also like you know another example. See the actually the, what it shows is that the shape of the curve itself you know shape of the curve here you can see that the shape of the curve is something like this. So, the even the shape of the curve tells you about uh, the changes in uh, shear st the density with respect to changes in water content. It is very important that one should uh, really get the compaction curve properly as, uh, uh, as nicely as possible because uh, this is something very important particularly from field control and also in trying to understand what is a, a to what extent the uh, soil is sensitive to changes in water content. So, that if you want to specify that soil yeah it should have a good basis otherwise uh, we have seen some soils where after some compaction they have a lot of uh, they become like uh, you know uh, shear strength is so low that uh, it will be a problem. Then uh, one important point that one should realize is that many of these soils have a tendency to go for an undergo compaction uh, sorry uh, collapse. So, for example, uh, they as I just mentioned the compacted uh, samples have uh, unsaturated soil component like you know air is present in the soil. So, if you add water what is going to happen is that air is removed and the soil becomes totally saturated and this becomes uh, a comp the it becomes saturated, but then there is a collapse that leads to uh, some changes in uh, settlement say for example, uh, some mm of the uh, settlements could occur. In fact, I must tell you an example here uh, about uh, some time back I visited a particular plant in uh, uh, close to one of the coastal areas in Andhra. Uh, they laid a raft foundation and um, the thing is that uh, that uh, raft foundation was constructed last year in the month of uh, May and then it got it was uh, uh, then it was given clearance. But after after that, uh, the uh, there were severe rains, and then the the, the the rains were so much that there were uh, four days of inundation in the a whole area, and the settlements after after that they measured uh, settlements of were of the order of about 170 mm, 
170 mm or 200 mm which means uh, they were now even wondering because for a raft foundation the allowable settle the total settlement is 100 mm. But when you observe settlement of about uh, 170 mm you will be worried whether uh, things are uh, okay or not or uh, whether the problem is uh, of uh, the compacted was the compaction good there are so many issues. So, it leads to lot of problems because the they did not realize that uh, the collapse is one of the reasons possibly they would have re they in the beginning itself they should have allowed all the area after compaction for wetting. So, that this uh, could have not taken place and they would have uh, really gone ahead with the construction. Now, you know even now people are worried whether the um, they may construct high they may place lot of machinery there whether the raft foundation is going to be stable that is the question. So, uh, to continue about uh, the same aspect here um, what you saw uh, just earlier was about the influence of uh, compaction and uh, what is going to happen to strength and if uh, there are variations in the water content uh, how the strength is going to get influenced and all that. Here in this some more information like say for example, one can do this in the lab also like you know you have a soil and then you have a compaction curve like this nicely and um, you have uh, 100 kPa, 200 kPa, 400 kPa, 800 kPa as uh, uh, surcharge pressures like you know you, you do a consolidation test right. You do a consolidation test and uh, the thing is that the um, you can have a sample set say for example, you can take this is a compaction curve right. So, you can take a sample here and then put a surcharge then you measure the settlement. The settlement is about uh, say here the settlement is given it is about uh, some uh, some uh, some units like 6 in actually in some 6 percent or something whatever some units are here. So, definitely you take a sample here and then uh, apply a pressure of 800 kPa it will have a very high settlement because pressure is very high. Then same sample if you have only 100 uh, thing the settlement is little less like it could be just in the range of about 1.5 to uh, 1.5 percent. So, what it means is that as uh, you apply load see this is a water content at which the material is there. So, 10, 20, 30, 40 the settlements are going to be higher. So, that is on the wet of optimum on the dry of optimum also like you know you take this uh, particular material and uh, so settlements are there like you know say for example, uh, you know uh, so what it shows is that settlements are expected on any side, but close to this uh, OMC and gamma day you can see the trough here uh, the valley type sorry valley in which you can say that the total settlement is minimum like it is in the range of about 3.5 percent uh, compared to any of these things you know like you can see here if you take 400 percent the settlement is here like um, say water content is about 12 percent the density is about uh, density of course, whatever density it has uh, the settlement is minimum. So, you can see that if you are able to close uh, the compact the sample close to its uh, optimum moisture content and density the settlements are going to be less this is a very important implication here like uh, on the other hand you can even see the collapse say for example, as I just mentioned the case of one uh, uh, example where uh, there is lot of inundation and then it led to collapse and uh, the collapse increases as the load is higher say for example, at uh, small loads the collapse is maybe less. So, it is uh, at 100 kPa the collapse is hardly about uh, less than 1, but uh, when the pressure is 200 it is about 1.5. So, as the load is increased like I showed you one diagram in which you actually you take the sample in the consolidation test then uh, apply some 100 k apply 100 or 200 kPa add water it just collapses. So, me measure the difference in the height and then calculate collapse. So, that collapse actually is very high in the case of 800 percent 800 kPa actually it is about 3.5 percent when the water content is about 11. See the case at 12 percent which is close to OMC this value the collapse is very less. So, what I want to say is that 
the compaction has a bigger role in uh, many of this uh, engineering response one should be able to compact uh, the uh, soil very well close to its maximum dry density and uh, whatever is measured in the laboratory and that should be uh, put into the field. This is another important point related to swell potential like you know the swell potential can be measured like you add uh, say you take a, say, set up a sample in the consolidation test allow add the water allow it to swell. So, you will get some swell percent difference like say for example, 3 percent or 4 percent or whatever. So, that is a very again maybe in some cases it causes collapse in some cases it causes uh, swell also it depends on the type of soil. So, you can see that when the this is a, a standard Proctor curve and you have a compaction uh, 0 air white line here and the uh, water content in the range of 25, 30, 30 like this is 0 percent swell line see which means that I have taken the sample and set up and added water, but still there is no swell it is a very interesting result here that close to the degree of saturation uh, line and then close to OMC you do not get a uh, good uh, there is no swell at all. But then if you just move little down like you know say for example, the if the degree of saturation is little uh, lower you know little lower and um, say for example, if uh, the densities are also going to be a little you know on the dry side you can see that say for example, it is 0 to 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 percent swell. You can see that the tendency is that the, uh, there is a tendency for soil to swell also on the dry side particularly when the degree of saturation is lower. So, this is a very important point because this are all uh, very important the one of these uh, the why we should do compaction is uh, what we understand from this. Then uh, see the thing is that the uh, one should be able to have a rough idea of uh, the type of soils that uh, one can have and the relative densities. Say for example, um, well graded uh, gravel loose state it will have this sort of densities 1.8, 1.9 very dense 1.2.2 uh, to 2.3 whereas poorly graded sand you know one like 1 1.4 to 1.6 it could be 1.8 to 2. So, one should have an idea of uh, that too depends on um, the laboratory compaction you know so for example, field compaction there could be many categories and depending on the type of soil that you have depending on particularly in the case of uh, uh, questionless soils like these are all questionless soils and uh, you must be able to identify the densities that you get. Say for example, if somebody asks you what should be the density that you are expecting you must be able to say these numbers otherwise you are not considered to be a very good engineer particularly when you are trying to do field uh, control. Very important point in this is that the densities are related to say for example, you know the definition of a relative uh, density or a density index uh, in which you need the what is the density, what is the minimum density or what is the maximum density based on that you use you get the density index and uh, say uh, the density is in the range of uh, 0 to 15 percent if you have um, you say it is very loose and 15 to 35 it is uh, loose medium dense then uh, dense and very dense. So, the then why is it so if you are able to really have this information you can say what should be the n value you can expect you know particularly in SPT value something that is uh, very important in field response if it is a very dense material the SPT will be in this uh, dense medium dense 10 to 30 or if it is very good you say more than 50. CPT is also same thing CPT value is another important variable like you know you do so many institute tests for quality control of compacted soils that we will see where uh, you try to measure the SPT values or the CPT values and also sometimes friction angle you take it to the laboratory and then measure its friction angle. You can see that the friction angle also is quite uh, big like you know say for example, when a very dense systems it could be 38 percent whereas in the case of loose materials it could be less than 30 based on this alone you may tentatively suggest a few things that yeah in this particular site I think that the compaction was not good maybe or you can say that the density that you are getting since uh, it is a well graded uh, uh, gravel if the density should be uh, little uh, in this range and not in 1.8 to 1.9 because I expect that there is a good compaction. So, like that one can make some observations and uh, say that uh, one can comment on the results.
So, this is another important point where you have uh, say for example, typical example of um, stress strain curves in the case of how um, you know how the wide ratio e, e naught is a wide ratio relative density is 20 percent and uh, relative density in the case of uh, it is uh, see uh, it is very high. So, wide ratio is 0.834 in this case is 0 0.605 wide ratio of the sample at which it is tested. You can see that it is a very strain high, you know you know, we know that we studied in basic soil mechanics that if the soil is loose it will have a behavior like this if it is a dense sand it is like this is it not. So, uh, what we see is that you will get a very good uh, understanding of uh, what type of densities you have, what type of responses you can have in terms of the stress strain and uh, so uh, this is very important from field implications even in volume change also you can see that uh, the uh, volume change has not been much in the case of very dense system whereas in the case of loose system the uh, volume change is about say for example, if you go to an axial strain of 30 percent it is very high about 15 to 15 percent. So, the axial strains are also very low in the case of dense system. So, what is uh, important is that um, the compaction is a very very important variable and a very I mean it has a significant influence on engineering performance whether it is uh, shear strength, whether it is uh, uh, compressibility, whether it is a swell behavior, whether it is a collapse behavior, whether it is a stress strain response whether it is moisture change susceptibility to moisture changes also one needs to really look at into very carefully and uh, see that uh, this is all implemented in the uh, uh, actual practice in a proper way. So, um, there are some more points that I should mention that normally we do a compaction test for the material passing through 19 mm, but if the material is higher say for example, in the lab in the lab is different and field is dif different the codes have some way of uh, mentioning that that should be corrected because to what extent uh, the field uh, you know the laboratory curve is relevant to field is in, uh, you should be able to correct for the grain size characteristics available in the field also. There are some methods prescribed in literature where if you know the percent uh, um, uh, say you normally through uh, you, you select a particular grade of uh, material for uh, compaction. So, if there is uh, that grade the if you go to the field and find out that uh, that material is only 50 percent uh, possible then you have to appropriately correct the maximum dry density and uh, uh, OMC there are some methods available and that is another important variable. Uh, another important point in this compaction is that the when you do the compaction in different layers. Uh, there is a possibility of uh, formation of weak zones like see you are expecting uh, you say that I am constructing a homogeneous embankment of 10 meters or 5 meters or whatever and this is a, that 5 meter embankment is coming lifts of say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 like this and uh, say at each 0 0.5 uh, meters thickness there is a, you know you must be able to see that both layers are very integral to each other. Then what you, otherwise what is going to happen is that if you do not have proper info like so you have to use proper scarifiers in the field and then see that they are interlocked properly. So, that uh, that does not should not form a weak zone. So, for example, the seepage occurs seepage could the, the water is easiest to pass and then if you if there is a dam and if there is some seepage coming and then you know that should not become a failure surface later. So, this is very important that even in the field also like you must be able to observe many points like. Uh, the uh, good quality and com uh, compaction and also the the way it is constructed and the proper choice of the um, compaction equipment soil the type of soil the compact effort and uh, the type of engineering response that you are expecting uh, should be uh, you should do tests a typical a few tests or uh, to see ok uh, I am getting I have a CBR of this uh, will it be sufficient uh, if I just change the water content in this manner say because this is the range of water content that is which uh, uh, the flooding may the flood because of the flooding the material may be subjected to. So, finally, it should not lead to collapse. So, all that needs to be examined in a proper way and uh, you know particularly in this uh, compaction you know many people know about compaction uh, uh, the way it can be done, but then actual practice is that it has lot of implications and finer aspects into uh, design. And if you do not do compaction properly many jobs in geotechnical engineering uh, you can I mean uh, you, uh, you cannot be done properly whether it is uh, um, 
the construction of shallow foundations, the construction of dams or even uh, construction of retaining walls like you know you have to construct behind the retaining wall the backfill. If the backfill is not properly compacted and then uh, what happens the pressures on the retaining walls are going to be higher. See another important uh, point that uh, maybe in this it is not mentioned the say I will tell you the example of a uh, re retaining wall itself like see when the uh, we, we know that uh, the compaction pressures are you know like K naught, K naught is minus sin phi. So, when it is 1 minus sin phi when phi is going to be higher say for example, we have just seen in the case of uh, phi uh, the uh, dense sand phi equal to about 38 degrees and whereas in the case of loose material it is 25. So, 1 minus sin phi is uh, that K naught will be um, lower for dense uh, material you know. So, a coefficient of earth pressure uh, so that is very important. So, some of these uh, no the coef the earth pressure that it, it can induce on the uh, retaining wall would be lower in the case of dense systems and uh, th that is an important variable. So, I feel that the compaction is an important uh, variable one needs to study carefully and uh, we will see how the compaction control could be achieved in the field in the subsequent classes. Thank you.